Hey everybody, it is Texax Rewind present. Oh. <laughs> that was Dalton. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know Dalton's had many bananas in his face before. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had one. It is Texax Rewind, and we are about to do happy. What are you it's doing? It's a birthday meat stick. This is a professional show. Kevin, what are we doing? Happy birthday, Nick. It's already out. Oh, oh it's blowed out. This was Thank way you. better in the conversation Here's before the segment. Stick. Happy birthday. I'm sorry. We're never going to get this back. Uh, Nick, happy birthday. Thanks, Tomorrow. Man. Tomorrow. What did we have on the show today? <sighs> well, normally I have it right in front of me. We had Terrence Murphy, of course. Had yeah. Billy. Uh, what do we have in the... <laughs> I don't the remember. Basement. We had meat sticks. Out of every rewind I've ever done, this is the absolute worst we've ever done. But you need to continue watching because we did have Murph in here. We had uh, Billy in the studio talking about the linebacker edition. We had a banana in the studio and the baseball bunch. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Of course. And a bunch of guys interviewing to be interns. You guys want to run on camera real quick? Be like my henchman in the back corner? Do like the behind shot. No. Bro. I apologize for anybody who yeah, watched this. Interns. This is, they're all, well, they're not interns yet. Oh, maybe interns. I'm not going to throw I don't this even away because it might catch on fire. I'm sorry for watching this. I didn't watch it. You, you didn't. Did. Watch, yeah. I'm not watching it. There's no chance. But if you're still watching, here's the rewind. Bryce Young isn't there. Uh, Will Anderson isn't there. They got a lot of question marks that they typically answer. A&M's coming off a five and seven season. There should be huge questions mar uh, marks, but I think they're bringing a lot of players back and a different offensive identity. Um, what do you think? Well, here's why um, I think Alabama's in a better place. They, they've been here before. The 11 wins tied their worst total, I think, since 2010. Uh, so that's the Alabama standard. We've seen them do this and come back and win a national championship the next year. There's a lot of guys on that team. We don't know their names yet, but we will. Everything you said about them is right, but A&M is coming from five wins <clears throat> Excuse me, in the West. Uh, Alabama's coming from 11. So, yeah, that, that's kind of, I think that's kind of a stretch. No, um, I, I agree with you. I, I think Alabama's got a shorter way to go to get there. But, if the, yeah, I, I guess you could make the case if it's, if it's question marks. Yeah, if Alabama's still in the portal looking for a quarterback, then, yeah, you could make that case. Yeah, I, by the way, yeah, of course you'd rather be where Alabama is. 11 wins, and right. we'll throw a, a parade. There's no doubt about that. I'm just saying heading into the season – there's less questions that have to be answered from a personnel standpoint than Alabama because of the returning production. And yes, Jumbo's got to figure it out. Um, so are, let me ask you this. Are you intrigued by A&M? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, a, if nothing else, a soap opera every day. Um, you know, how are they going to do at, uh, with Bobby Petrino, at offensive coordinator, Connor Wegman going to come through? Is you know, is, is Aeneas Smith after the injury is a huge, it, that's almost like a trade that you get. You know, you trade up and, and get a guy out of nowhere. We know what he can do. Um, so, no. Uh, and then, you know, it just, it, it looks like, you know, Jim, Jimbo is like a lot of coaches. He says he doesn't read the stuff. He reads the stuff. <laughs> we know the stuff. So he's, he's feeling it. Um, you know, he's, he's got to produce this year, whatever that means. I don't know exactly, but he's got to produce. But you have to have the opener go out and do their limited one time through the lineup job. And when that succeeds, it's going to open the door for whoever follows, Ashen Beck, whoever an, another guy would be, to have that success. Brandon Garcia is a name that's mm -hmm. going to get mentioned a lot more down the stretch here, I think, because – I don't want Ashenbeck starting because I want the possibility going into every weekend that he could affect two games, multiple games. If you start him, that's it. He's going to affect one game. Now, last week he affected one game, but it was the kind of the perfect storm. You win game one, offense pulls away, you don't have to use him. Now I got him in a game two situation where if I've got the lead uh, or I'm going to do the opener thing, I can hand him the ball and he can go for a while, and we had a chance to win the series on Saturday. Or in game two, there, there's huge value in him using him once a weekend in that role. But I want to go into every weekend with the chance that Evan Oshinbeck could pitch in two games. Same uh, argument could be made last year for Palish moving into the rotation, right? But I mean, you don't get to Omaha, you don't go on that deep run without him affecting multiple games on multiple weekends. Yep. And some weekends he only affected one game. It's a, you there. 
that's where I was talking about their their ability to compartmentalize. It was like in that game, okay, hey, Oshinbeck's going good. What's his pitch count at? It's a six inning. We don't have the run rule in effect yet. Do I need to get the the pin up and, and warm some of those guys up? No. They had their guy out there doing what he needed to do, and then they got the run rule. And you look at Sunday, the opportunity to have a good Sunday with everything you had, everybody you wanted to have available on a Sunday. Oshinbeck actually affected game three because of how good he was in game two. It's just he wasn't on the mound to have an effect. And, you know, it's it's not traditional baseball. I know Coach Schloss is a, a traditional baseball guy. When he has a, a season where he's got three established starters and Tuesdays are when people are going to move themselves up and down the ladder. So, yeah, I, I, I love the J.D. Davis pickup yesterday, man. It's what they need, you know, these last two of DeBerry and Davis. You want guys that are – look, I mean, at the end of the day, you want – Anthony Hill to be in Maroon White. You want Harold Perkins to be in Maroon White. They need to recruit better at that position. You want more hits like Edgerin Cooper. Um, but the reality is, when you're going in the portal, there are two things you do. Yeah, you'd love to got the guy from Oklahoma State. You want to get starters, and you want to get veteran guys that have played a lot of football and have a lot of tape your evaluations tend to be a lot better when you can do that. And uh, I think in these last couple of cases, these are guys that have played a lot of ball. Uh, Jay Davis is a nice physical linebacker. You watch him on tape. He finds the football. He, he's built for this league. I think he's a great uh, – you, you're going to go – you know, you lost Andre White and you add a guy like him. You know, you lose – couple corners in the portal you, you lose Jalen Jones big experienced corner you add Tony Grimes a big experienced corner you lose you know a couple of these depth guys at corner I, I, I don't know that you replace a uh, you know what Denver Harris could have been but we need to wait and see what Denver Harris actually is with LSU we know the talent but can he keep it together enough to be on the field um that one's a tougher one, but everything else you're losing, you know, you lose some of this corner depth. Well, you replace inexperienced corner depth in the way of Taylor and Gross Killebrew with, you know, with guy, with a guy like DeBerry, who's a three-time on some level all-ACC pick, at one point a second-team all-ACC pick, played a ton of football. In the case of Davis, you've got a lot of tape to look at from last year. He physically passes the eyeball test. He's been here a couple times. They should be good, right, Murph? How do you feel about this yeah. year's offense? Yeah. Um, I wasn't ready for that question right out of the game. Yeah. That's a, that's a we hamburger. We jumped right in. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I had an emotional year last year yes. uh, watching watching a and football. Yep. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people I always want to be positive. Yeah. Because it's just so easy to sit on the couch and point fingers. But I think at the same time, there's a level of accountability. Mm-hmm that we expect as Aggies, as former football players, as donors, as alumni. I mean, you look at this facility across the street. You look at the pay scale that we've provided. You look at the location, SEC. I mean, mm-hmm. there's really no excuse. No. Um, but, yeah, I think for me, the Petrino move was very intriguing. We've seen his offenses uh, be very creative. And I think that's what we got to do. i said this. If you cannot – it used to be, member great defense. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't really understand, like – and I'm not here to pat myself on the back, but I'm a historian when it comes to college football. Yeah. Because I had three older brothers that played. And my older – my oldest brother was the number one recruit in the state of Texas. Yeah, went to Arkansas, right? w- w- Went to Baylor. Oh, uh, Baylor. Grant Taft. Right. My best friend went to Arkansas. Yeah, And yeah. then cousins with the UT and Houston, whatever. So, I mean, I literally <laughs> was here in 94 and watched the 94 A&M team play um, when I was in fifth grade. Yeah. So – I've been around a Aggie football student. <laughs> a long time, bro. So I say all that to say the one thing I've said about Aggie football from last year is you're not going to win big right now in college football if you can't throw the ball down the field. Mm-hmm. If you don't have explosive plays, you're just not going to win. It doesn't matter how good you run the ball. It doesn't matter how good you hurry up offense. It doesn't matter how good you play defense. You got to throw the ball down the field. So I was blown away at times where we just never took shots. 
And it just you can't you can't win in college football. And and that was the adjustment. When we in 2012 did what we did with Cliff Kingsbury and Johnny and and Summy, 